On the 19th day of October, Halloween gave to me 19 Kung Fu Vampires, 18 Haunted Marches, 17 Eternal Lonelinesses, 16 Cursed VHS Tapes, 15 Spectral Snapshots, 14 Mothers Murdering, 13 Prices Bleeding, 12 Models Dying, 11 Betty's Baking, 10 Prices Burning, 9 Seagulls Pecking, 8 Scientists Sneaking, 7 Goldwyn Shooting, 6 Psychic Scamming, 5 Naked Witches, 4 Alien Spelunking, 3 UFO Abductions, 2 Deputy So-and-Sos, and a Masked Hawk being creepy. Hey everyone, welcome to the 31 Days of Halloween. This is day 19. Uh, that is right, the 19th of October. I hope everyone is having a delightful uh, Wednesday morning. It is cold enough here now that I had to turn on the heat, which makes me very happy in a way. I love the fact that uh, we have now officially turned the corner into not just the, the trimmings of fall, but fall proper. Uh, I, I was taking uh, the dog for a walk yesterday and was uh, just beset by falling leaves and, and the trees all uh, turning uh, nature's grand colors of the fall, you know, oranges and yellows and reds. And it was, oh, it's wonderful. I love this time of year. I love the fact that we are talking about uh, a bunch of Asian horror movies of late. We've got today and one more tomorrow, and then we'll, we'll jump into uh, what is kind of the final stretch of, of movies this year, which is a little bittersweet, um, cause I've enjoyed this, uh, this lineup quite a bit. Um, so, you know, in our three categories of movies that I've been watching this year of things I haven't seen, things that I haven't seen in a while or things that I just want to watch for uh, my own amusement. Rigor Mortis was one I had not caught up to. So Rigor Mortis was, uh, one of the, the, of that first category things I had not seen yet. And I was really eager to see it because I, I'd had people tell me that it was okay. And uh, it, it looked that like the visually it looked kind of striking and it is, it's visually striking. Um, but I would probably agree that the movie itself is just okay, but l let's get into it. So this is uh, directed by a guy named Juno Mock. And Juno Mock is mostly known for uh, being an actor, um, although he has produced this movie, uh, Rigor Mortis, back in 2013. There was one called Sons of the Neon Knight that he is uh, tied to as uh, director as well. Um, he was in uh, the movie Dream Home uh, as a cop, and uh, he's like dream home if you've never seen it holy cow dream home is just one of the best uh, uh best asian horror movies you're ever likely to see that thing that thing is vicious uh, it has a bad attitude and, and which i like uh so he's he's a filmmaker in a lot of regards and rigor mortis was his uh directorial debut hasn't released anything since not not that he's directed but he's a, a fascinating figure in that he seems to be uh, the guy who like had uh, some success on a television series called Survivor's Law, and then has just been sort of bouncing through, you know, a couple of acting roles, some produ some production work, and then, um, you know, directing this as well as trying to get some other stuff off the ground. And so he seems kind of like a scrappy filmmaker, you know, but let's talk about rigor mortis specifically. And it is the story of a guy, uh, who, who's sort of a washed up actor. Um, and he, uh, moves to this, you know, tenement of, of a block of flats, uh, if you will. And, um, it, you know, it's populated by some interesting characters. There's the old man who we learn pretty quickly is not so secretly an old vampire hunter. Uh, there is this old man's rival living in the building who seems to be screwed around with some dark magic. And uh, as the movie begins, our hero 
tries to hang himself. Like he's got uh, some, you know, trauma that he is processing from his past involving his family. And so he tries to do himself in and the sort of white magic guy saves him. And uh, he becomes embroiled in a story in inside this apartment block where there is uh, an older man who ends up dying. And so the guy who's into dark magic decides, well, I'm going to help out this widow, uh, bring him back to life. But I also kind of have my own agenda here. That involves a pair of twin ghosts that live in the building and, um, you know, ultimately leads to this dead guy becoming back as a vampire. And the problem with all of that, because it seems cool, right? Like all that stuff seems like a pretty interesting idea. The problem with it, however, is that it it's a bit meandering uh, in its storytelling. Like there's all the, these other kind of subplots with uh, this young mother and the, the child that she is taking care of. And that has, there's some business with that. And it's just, it, it's a little too much, you know, it's a, it's a, there's a, a few too many ingredients in this uh, particular stew. Which is a bummer because the basics are there and there's some spooky imagery. The other thing is that um, Juno Mock is playing this as sort of a hybrid action horror movie. And so you have moments that play more like, you know, a, a, a kung fu movie that exists in the world that, you know, uh, uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and movies like The Matrix and stuff like that. You know, these kind of slow motion, elaborate fight sequences. And those are okay. They're not great, but they're okay. And then you have these horror elements. And let me tell you, there is an honest-to-goodness hopping vampire in this movie, uh, as is befitting, you know, the, the region where hopping vampires are sort of par for the course. And I loved it. I, there, there wasn't enough. That was my biggest complaint is there's not enough hopping vampire action. You only see it a couple of times. It's like, why are we not following this hopping vampire all over the place? I love this. Uh, and and it, it's disappointing to me that it, it's only used a little bit, but I liked it when it happened. And like I said, there were some striking visuals. The visuals regarding the vampire, and you've probably seen the image of the mask that he wears that's sort of the the this kind of beaded look that covers uh his mouth and all of that stuff looks really good like i think juno mac knows how to frame a shot and how to you know the the production design works really well within the film the problem is just pacing it's just kind of dull uh, at, at, for long stretches of it and it, it wastes its time getting to the stuff that's actually good and interesting about it and like when you see these twin ghosts and, and sort of get their backstory and all of that it's really interesting and the twin ghosts themselves um, are these kind of floating swirling figures and there's this you know black tentacular CGI that surrounds them that's not terrible and uh, all of that stuff is is really interesting, but like I said, it it's kind of like throwing a bunch of ingredients into a stew. Like, hey, we've got some delicious bits of lamb and some potatoes and maybe some broth and corn. And you're like, this all tastes good, and they're like, uh huh. But also, we're gonna throw in a handful of peppermints, and you're like, well, I don't know that that's gonna go well. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But more is always better, right? And that seems to be the philosophy of, of the movie itself is that more is better. And that is not always the case. Uh, but the twin ghosts are good. And, and I like that. And the vampire is good. And I like that. And the story of this, you know, lonely, broken guy moving to a hotel where he gets embroiled in a tale of the supernatural is good. And I like that. Uh, but it just, there's just too much. It's just a, a little too much of all of that. Uh, which, again, is a shame. There ought to be... Um, a little bit 
more focus in the movie. I, and I think that would make it better. But I also don't want to tell you that it's just a straight up bad movie because it's not. Although I will say that it has an ending. And this is just a problem with me and this style of ending where it, it tries to recontextualize everything you've seen earlier in the movie. And I was a little bit bummed by it. I didn't think it really worked. Uh, I didn't. I didn't really care for it. Um, but all things being equal, I, I think that Rigor Mortis is an interesting and, and deeply flawed movie. But I'm glad that I got around to seeing it because I, again, this is one of the great things about doing 31 Days of Halloween is that I end up seeing movies that I've always meant to see and and never have. And I do think that Rigor Mortis is worth seeing if you're interested in Asian horror cinema because it, it it's a weird blend of a lot of different styles of Asian horror. And as I said, I don't think it all works when you put it together in this way, but it does hit upon a lot of tropes and, and a lot of uh, sort of visual shorthand that a lot of Asian horror movies uh, traffic in. And I think it's... It's almost interesting as that, as sort of a Rosetta Stone for a lot of other Asian horror films, even though it, it comes so late uh, in terms of, you know, Asian horror chronologically. But it, it's an interesting movie, and I'm and, and I it was worth watching, um, but eh, not wholly successful. So, in the in the grand scheme of, hey, should I watch this on a, a cool Halloween night? Maybe. Um, it, if you've never seen it, I'm glad I did it. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that I've had the experience of seeing Rigor Mortis now. It's not one of my favorites in the genre. Depending on the genre, there are three, four different genres going on in this movie. Um, but it, it's fascinating. It's almost, if you're a filmmaker or a, a burgeoning filmmaker, it would be worth watching to see how a blend of a number of genres or modes um don't necessarily fit together well like sometimes that is great like from dust till dawn is kind of terrific because it goes from being this kind of crime noir movie and pivots you know it like a hard left turn into like schlocky horror and that works really well within from dust till dawn and there are a number of movies that will will make those kinds of turns uh or blend uh, those kinds of things, you know, there's, uh, the, you, the burrowers is a good example of a horror Western or something like bone tomahawk. And this is part Kung Fu movie, part drama, part supernatural action film, part horror film. And none of that stuff sits real comfortably alongside the other, unfortunately, but there's some really great elements, uh, in it and some really good moments and some good creepy visuals. So, uh, on all of those levels, I would recommend it, but I'm not like full throatedly telling you like, you've got to see rigor mortis. Uh, it's, it's more like it's a curiosity more than it is a great movie. Um, so anywho, that's enough about rigor mortis. We got more to talk about tomorrow is going to be the last of our Asian horror, uh, survey that we are, are doing and, uh, you know, going out with a bang folks. We'll talk about it tomorrow, but oof, oof, we got a good one tomorrow. And, uh, as always, thank you for listening to 31 days of Halloween as we're, you know, approaching the, the home stretch. I hope you are enjoying this all. Uh, I know I am the, this has been so much fun to do. It's, it's continues to be so. And, uh, yeah. So if you're, uh, listening to this on the dark parade feed, please, of course, jump over and, uh, subscribe to the Legion podcast feed so that you can get all of the great stuff over there. A number of terrific shows on the Legion Podcast Network, which the Dark Parade is is proudly a part of. Uh, yeah, let me let me point you to hello, this is the Doom Show, a slight spoiler for tomorrow. That is a show that would feature uh, the movie we're talking about tomorrow, and, and might have. I'll have to ask Richard about that. I'm not sure if they've done it. Uh, I know they've referenced it on the show a couple of times. Um, so, if not, I, may, I might need to get Richard on Dark Parade to talk about it. Anyway, we'll, we'll discuss all that tomorrow. Um... Yeah, so be sure you're subscribed to Legion Podcast. If you are listening to this on the Legion Podcast feed, please jump over to subscribe to The Dark Parade where we do a weekly show. Except, of course, for October where we're doing a show every single day uh, and, and we'll get back to normal business in short order. And I think that's going to do it uh, for this time out. Everybody, go have yourselves a very spooky Wednesday 
and uh, be sure you are celebrating Halloween uh, in all that you do. Bring smiles and scares to the faces of those around you, but not in a way that will cause them substantial trauma that would involve therapy. Uh, just good, clean fun, right, people? You know, uh, like uh, hiding behind corners and jumping out at them, that kind of thing. Unless they have a heart attack, in which case uh, that was a terrible idea, and I don't know why you did it. Also, I am not legally liable for suggesting you do such a thing. So, uh, anyway, that's enough out of me. Uh, I will see everyone tomorrow on the 31 Days of Halloween. Talk to you then. Bye.